graduates Straight to the league, I ain't waiting for my knee to blow Yesterday I was needing this dough Get it? I was needing this dough Is this going to say that it was recorded in front of a live studio audience? Absolutely. I've always wanted to see that in front of something. <laughs> You're finally on one of those yeah. shows, Marty. <laughs> exactly. So, Marty and Michael, you talked about your parents. Your dad made a lot of sacrifices for you guys. My mom did, too. I think the biggest thing that my parents did for us is that they didn't put an emphasis on anything. So, like, I played a symphony growing up. I played trombone. But my parents would be at the my symphony the same way they would be at the football game, right? They would be there the same front row, cheering, great job, make sure I had everything I needed to get. And they would go to the football games and do the same. So, for me, it was like football was never more important than band or band was less imperative to my parents because they supported everything we did. So, that's how our parents were. Now, let me ask you this. In the world of sport, when does it become a business? Everybody else knows it's a business besides the athletes. That's what I was going to ask. When, do the player, so when should the players know it's a business? They should know right away because every player is an entrepreneur and we're a consultant. Like every year I got to improve my product just in case somebody else needs me to come in and consult at the tight end position. It's the same thing for defense and ends. Yeah. Everybody's an entrepreneur. You're a one-man contract to go out there and perform at a high level. But I think most players miss it because they love playing football. A lot of athletes are first-generation money. So we never were taught about money or about investment. We never see parents. I, in the black community where we grow up, nobody wants to talk about money. So it's like, it's like, hey, here's three million dollars. Good Go luck. Do yeah. <laughs> so, and that's a lot of money. If you and then so you the people that you will lean on, your parents, they never managed that much money or seen that much money in their life. I think too, if, to piggyback off what he's saying too, I think a lot of times when people look at athletes, they see they see a man, but in the reality of it. They've been so like coddled through the whole process that they haven't had a chance to develop. And one of the things they haven't been able to develop is financial literacy. And I think in my in my house, we never talked about it in depth. We never talked about the you know trust and you know wills and different ways to you know life insurance, different ways to assure that your kids are, have some kind of um, fallback plan. We never really had those in depth conversations, those honest conversations that you need to be able to have to be able to have that background. And I think now with my kids, I try to focus on that and teaching them about what's important. Even like now raising my daughter, I'm not raising a worker bee, right? I'm raising a queen bee, right? So, because football is something I can't, you can't give, right? I, my son, if I have a son, there's no telling he's gonna be 6'7", 270 pounds and strikingly handsome, you know? <laughs> what a mean stiff for him, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it, there's no guarantee, but like creativity, and entrepreneurship is something I could teach and give to my kids. They could inherit my company. They can't inherit anything I did on the field. When I started a company, it was because I wanted to show my daughter that anything was possible. So a big part of a lot of stuff I do is to show her that she could do and become anything that she want to be by doing it myself. So you, Michael, you obviously talked about budgeting too and saving your checks. Was budgeting something you learned in the league or were you guys instilled that growing up? As a kid, I always try to save my money a lot. Like I had different jobs and I used to save my money and then buy me and my brother's school clothes. I worked at, I was a lifeguard for most of, most of the time I was a lifeguard for four years. Being a lifeguard in a black community is a, a big job. <laughs> <laughs> my journey to the NFL is different from Martello. So he got drafted in the second round, and I went undrafted. So cool. I had to be tight from the beginning. Like for my first three years, I lived in a hotel. Like I would live in a hotel. To save money? To save money. And plus, the biggest mistake I ever made in the NFL was that I made a team at the Seattle Seahawks. I went and got in a townhouse. I bought furniture. I uh, had my, uh, my wife come up to uh, Seattle. And like two, three days later, I got cut. And so and now you got this house and all this well, stuff. I was rules of rent, and I couldn't get none of my money back. So I, I was like, that was my first time learning about contracts, and you know, I couldn't uh, get my rent back for the year. I just lost it. And so from then on, I never wanted that mistake to happen. Marty, for you, when you first signed your contract, what was the first big splurge you made? Was there something big that you bought that you were like, I got to have this? I cashed my check, and I threw it up. All the cash? I slept in the money. All the money? <laughs> How much was it? Like one point something, but I put it. What do you do it in the living room? In your in house? my bedroom, so I, I handcuffed a briefcase to my hand, because I always wanted to do that, right? Are you serious or are you joking? I'm serious. Wait, wait, are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Well, how much was in the suitcase? A lot, right? 1.1 million? It wasn't, it wasn't that much, but it was 
a good chunk of money. Like I found twenty dollar bills like two two weeks later. <laughs> I did. I only had it one he day. Said, Michael, he I said, took it, I took it right back to the bank the next so day. So you walked out of the bank with a handcuff and a briefcase? Yeah, nothing better than feeling rich. Of course, right? So I mean, wealth is of the mind, not of the pocket. But in this moment, right, <laughs> it's about the pocket, right? <laughs> 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 Michael, what was the first thing you bought when you got that first big, big check? I bought my parents a house. That was the first thing we did. Which I told them not to do. Why not? And I told them, I said, don't do it yet. But I was like, get your house first and then get their house. So you bought your parents' house before you bought yourself so a house? I bought my parents and my, my um, wife's parents' house before I bought myself a house. It was because I was unsettled in where I wanted to live. But Michael, so in the position that you're in now, you've educated yourself. What are some of the tips you would give young athletes about budgeting now as they come into the league out of college? I think I think for young athletes, I would tell them about investments, you know, getting them caught up, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, whether it's life insurances or whatever it is, annuities, being able to understand that that money is, is supposed to take, it's supposed to grow, compound interest. So being able to talk to young people about compound interest is something that I talk to a lot of athletes about. And it's like something that they don't really understand until you start, you know, until you start telling them it's the greatest thing in the world to be sitting home and look at and, and to get a check from somewhere or look at your stock and see it jump exponentially every week or every year. And so it's, it's, it's a great thing to educate young people on those type of things.